morning, viewers. Welcome to another important edition today on Kogi Weekly News Review. As usual, we are here to do the needful as it concerns uh, the activities or the happening in Kogi State. Uh, before we go into this program properly, my own name is Mohammed Ali Obaka also known as Ogijo Olopo, and my colleagues here is Comrade Tijani Osman. Stay tuned. Let's go on this short break. When we come back, we shall go into the program properly. <laughs> Welcome back to this uh, program today. Um, we have a series of uh, you know, news that I want to report before my brother here analyzed. The first on it is that, uh, yes, how Kogi State government casualized workers. We are going to look at that. Second one is that Kogi State House of Assembly has endorsed Governor Ayabello for presidency. 2023. 2023. Then power supply, Honorable Halimson, also has, uh, you know, is making case for his own federal constituency. Ampa. In Ampa. So I think it's a is the right direction. So we are going to we are going to do justice to that too. Kogi State government uh, they are going to conduct local government election and that of a councillorship election too. Then the Honorable Zakaria move motion for mm. you know the construction for constructions of uh, Ibaji and uh, Anambra. Anambra Road. I think it's also a welcome development. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, let's start with uh, how Kogi State government casualized worker. Good days once more, our regular viewers. Welcome you to this uh, platform of uh, Kogi Weekly Review on Ogoyo Lopo TV. So, given uh, the area Ogoyo Lopo just speak on, on how Kogi State government uh, casualize local government workers, teachers, and uh, pensioners, you know, the area, the issues of uh, Worker casualizations has uh, ranged over Kogi for a very long period of time. But let me concentrate my emphasis today on the worsening aspect of it, starting from around 2016 down to where we are today. Far back at 2016, before the inauguration of uh, Governor Yaya Bello as the executive governor of Kogi State, Though there was a little casualization from the, the WADA government, which about three months um, salary were in areas, given the, uh, the, the bailout uh, timing of about 60% uh, or thereabout for about three months. But sometime around March 2017 to June in 2017, so the local government workers and the pensioners and the teachers particularly the basic educational teachers in the state, started receiving 60% uh, of their salary. So then we thought it was uh, a kind of economic situation that the government was trying to address, going, giving the lot of uh, screening that the government introduced at that point in time, and the situation keep on increasing. So by July, of, uh, by July 2017 to August 2017, the percentage decreased from 60% down to 40 percent. So guys were wondering what the situation could have uh, been. So by the time we got to 17, uh, around uh, September in 2017, down to January in 2018, IT government began to pay them 25 percent of their salary. <laughs> what happened to 75 percent? That's another issue that we could be able to discuss on that time. Then by by February to August of 2018, he declined. He declined to 20% of salary basic. Then by September 2018, then to December 2018, what we got was 40%. So there was a little bit increment from 20 back to 40. So, and I think that was the period they, they received some bailout from the federal uh, government. So by January 2019, they, and to April, they maintain the 40% of salary for those uh, set of uh, workers and pensioners. 
Then by the time we get to May to July 2019, then these salaries were increased tremendously to 80%. Now I want to ask, why was it increasing from 40% to 80% as of between the area of May and August in 2019? Because that was a period of the re-election uh, of the of the governor so they use that to make the civil servant to believe that the government will have their repentant uh, set of human being so after the election we get back to sometime in december it, it reduced down to 50 percent and down from january this year of 2020 down to date then the state and uh, local government workers and the 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 teachers and the pensioners, they have been on casualization of 35%. So at that point in time, we begin to wonder if in, from 2016 down to this 2020, that four years interval, and the government could not be able to bring out an economic blueprint to address the issue of uh, workers' uh, casualization, that is very sympathetic and that is not being, uh, not being fair to the purpose of uh, governance. So we are calling on the government and under the leadership of Governor Yabelo to address the issue of workers' casualization with immediate effects. I want you to look at the issue of uh, uh, State of House of Assembly mm. endorsing Governor Yabelo and to contest for presidential election in the uh, year 2020, is it 2023, right? Yeah, 2023. Uh, what are the parameters for measurement before vying for the post of presidency in this country? Mm. In as much as politically, mm. Every individual have his mm -hmm. or her opinion in order to make political stance. And the House of Assembly that I know is supposed to be an independent institution of governance mm. that is not supposed to be joined in the jeopardy of failure. Yes. <laughs> but for them to come out and endorse the governor of Kogi State for presidency in 2023, they are, have the mandate to their own opinion. But Nigeria 2023 is a Nigerian project. Yes. And it's a project that constitutes 35 other states of the federation, including mm. Abuja, to become 36. Mm. So minus Kogi, I think that endorsement will not hold water. Is an endorsement caricature in the making in order to dwind from the preserve and the reserve pocket of the governor. Wow. Yes, that is circumference. Before you endorse the governor for that position, what have been the performance appraiser in the state? Let's look at Yaya Bello as a person from his private life. How has he been able to, to move industrially? in his own personal business of transportation. Then come to the state management. How has he been able to manage the economy of Kogi State? How has he been able to manage effectively this, the workforce of Kogi State? How has he been able to effectively utilize the resources of Kogi State to attract development? How many foreign direct investment has Kogi State attracted under his watch and under his leadership? Then before we are now looking at a Nigerian project, to me is an indication that they are telling us what Kogi money has been preserving for wow. and it will not reach anywhere. Take this today. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the last time we were here, we talk about uh, Honorable Halimson. Yeah. We like we gave him advice on how to go about. Yeah. But I am happy to see it on the on on net that he said that uh, he said power supply. Honorable Halimson trying to make case for his federal constituency. That is Ankpa federal constituency and all that. Mm. What is your take on that? Recently, we saw Honorable Halims Alims making a case for poor power supply in his federal constituency, specifically Ankpa local government. Yes. And uh, he made this case where he was in an entourage with uh, other members of the Federal House of Representatives okay. on a visit to the Niger Delta, uh, Niger Delta Power Holding Company. Wow. 
So and where he raised those cases and um, the issue of Ankpa came up. So what, what I'm trying to look at is it is, it is a nice one. He has made his voice where the voice needs to be heard. And at the federal level, I think something is going to be done as regards to the, uh, the resolutions of the epileptic power supply in Ankpa. Well, in another way around now, you can see, hmm. this is not coming out at the same time the party he belonged to. Yes. That is the ruling party in the state under a particular government that are claiming to have lighted up Pogi East. Yes. And when we were here in our last edition, hmm. we talked about how can you lighten Kogi East yeah. where Ankpa was in darkness. Yes. And today, Honorable Alims is making a case for the same Ankpa local government being in darkness. So please, I think Kogi State government need to tell us which part of Kogi East are they lighting up? We had the PDP Jonas chairman, you know, beating his chest and say, look, this election, all my councillorship and the chairmanship contestants, they are going to come out victorious. What is your take on that? Before I join the take on the statement of Yunnan Chairman of PDP in Kogi State, I will, want, I will first and foremost want to speak as a citizen of the state to pass a message to our people back there home okay. that uh, the local government election is coming and is scheduled to hold on the 12th of December 2020 that government at local government is a government for the grassroots. So therefore, they should come out in masses in order to exercise their franchise, their political right to vote for any candidate of their choice. And while we call on, the, on them to do that, we want to call on the state government to take a cue learning from the Kaduna State Governor, mm. who is an APC Governor, but give a room for free, fair, and credible election in the state, where we saw opposition party even winning some stronghold of election. So let the government allow the election to be transparent. Let the election to be peaceful, and let the election not to be the kind of ta-ta-ta election that we didn't claim in 2019 as a victory election because we know how the APC conducted election in Kogi State. But we're appealing to them for posterity, for legacy, and for tomorrow generational history to allow this election to be the first most credible conducted local government election in Kogi State. Thank you, Honorable Tijani. Mm. Federal House of Representatives, Honorable Zakaria, motion yeah. has been, you know, adopted, adopted in the House, yeah. you know, for them to construct uh, yeah. Ibaji and Anambra Road. Mm. And Nora, what is your take on that? Yeah, you see, the essence of governments mm. and the essence of representing people in the Parliament okay. is in order to sponsor a bill or a motion okay. that is meant to benefit the people. So for Honorable Zakaria, motion to be adopted at the federal parliament in the lower chamber, to me, is a very good one and it's a kudos okay. to those who know how to do representative democracy. How I wish lot of these kind of motions have been adopted and follow up at the federal parliament. By today, Kogi won't have been backwarded in the area of federal presence in terms wow. of infrastructure. Well, uh, thank you very much, comrade. Because of the time, we'll, yeah. this is uh, how far we can go on this uh, topic. We have a lot to say about Kogi State Government. But maybe when next we come here, we'll throw more light on it. Thank you very much. Thank you.